Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition of the Retro Gamers Podcast, CES 2020. Larry here. And Anthony here. Uh, um, hmm. Uh, and, uh, there's something uh, a, little, a little odd there. I think you're a little uh, a little low. Your camera. Am I a little low? Uh, your camera's oh, a little low. Is my camera a little yeah, low? Yeah. Is my camera low or am I too high? Oh, I, uh, I, I don't know because I can't see the... Uh, I mean, can you... Uh, I don't know. You may be a Wait, little high. On. Yeah, because the background yeah, let me looks... Pack. Let's try something. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> and from now on, every episode will begin with us dropping from the ceiling. <laughs> there you go. That felt a little elevator action. Do 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 donk. Game's great. Now I want to play elevator action. That's it. I'm pausing the episode. We're gonna go play elevator action. Uh, it sounds good as long as it's not online. <laughs> yes, uh, Anthony uh, is. As much as we're going to be talking about, uh, this is a special edition episode, so we're going to talk about some new tech. Uh, Anthony has been whisked back to the Stone Age uh, in Bedrock. Because- I know um, my my internet is down, so I have decided I have now shucked all of my plans for today, and I will be churning butter and reading books. <laughs> I like it. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, put up a. Did you see that that story of supposedly like 250 Amish literally just picking up a barn that was already built and just moving it across yeah. the farm? <laughs> it's, amazing. it's amazing what people can do. I, give me and my I'm tech. One of them today. <laughs> yeah, for, until that internet's back on, and you're like, oh my god, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, no, trust me, I will be. <laughs> I will. I will probably be spending most of my day at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could have done it from there. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Okay, that would have thing. <laughs> I think I've done a pot. Well, I haven't. But when I was on the Beats and Speaks podcast, um, the host of that show, Lee Dickey, he was in a Starbucks, yeah. and you're, it was funny to hear people in the background. It was pretty good. <laughs> I know. I could, I could have interviewed a bunch of caffeinated, deprived people as they wait in line. Can't you go to Aroma? Is that what it's no, called? No, because. Not- no, well, one, they don't have internet connection there because no? they don't want you to stay. Oh. Um, two, I need all the cake. This is true. Right? Folks, uh, cheap plug. If you're in Los Angeles, the last couple of times I was there, go to this place called Aroma. You get a you get a, a, a chocolate cake the size of your head, size of my head. That's a pretty big slice. It, it really is. No, it really is. And the best Arnold Palmer on the planet. I don't care what anybody says. Nice. So, uh, but we're not here to talk about food. I would love to, but we're not here to talk about no, food. A different show that we haven't started yet. <laughs> we're here to talk about CES 2020, uh, the first uh, major uh, expo, if you will, for the year, and um, some new tech coming out. Uh, we're going to focus on some of the gaming of it, but there's a lot of, you know, as usual, a lot of interesting stuff coming out. Um, you know, 2020 looks very promising. Yeah, um, based on based on the things that I saw, um, I got, yeah, I mean, it was really exciting. There was some really, there, really some cool stuff in the uh, in the video game realm um, that, that popped out. And then uh, on top of that, just, just some really cool tech stuff that we can see the video game industry benefiting from. Uh, yeah. um, plus one plus a big surprise from Sony that we'll talk about. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, some of the cool like non gaming stuff, you know, there's a, a startup company that's looking to like to recycle your your bath water and then cleans it and then throws it into the toilet or something like that. I don't know. Um then oh. there's like a smart watch. Cat. Yeah. Cat. Uh oh. Cat. Careful, because this cat can now destroy everything today. I know. Literally, she can knock it down in the blink, blink of an eye. There she is. Say hi. I okay. want to watch the world. Both your cats just want world domination. It's very pinky in the brain. They really do. They really do. Well, I, I, she's no. the brain. She, see, now she's got her nose up on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is all. This is going to go all wrong. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know some some cool stuff I saw. So that uh, I saw a very nice uh, smartwatch that was very hybrid in design. Like it looked like a, it was a classic watch with the hands, the sec, you know, very uh, elegant looking. But then, like right on top, had the tech part of it uh, that would do like your EKG, test sleep apnea, does other smart watch stuff. So it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so a lot of interesting stuff and uh, some stuff as well. That's not gaming, but part of gaming that we'll get into a little later. Um, I figured let's just jump right into it. 
Yeah, let's go for it. All right, let's do it. Um, first out of the box is uh, something that's going to be a little near to de- near and dear to my heart, and uh, hopefully, and I hope this jumps on your radar as much as you have the retro freak and you are able to play uh, Game Boy games through it. Um, Hyperkin is throwing their hat into the handheld uh, market with the Retron Junior. Yeah, I saw that. It looks really cool. Uh, I'm I'm liking it. Uh, Retron Junior basically will uh, well, it will let you play your Game Boy, your Game Boy Color, and your Game Boy Advance games right there on your television. Um, you know, Hyperkin. Actually, not even Hyperkin. Before we get to that, I feel, and just correct me if you think I'm wrong, 2020 um, <laughs> might be the year of like the handheld clones, you know, like retro handheld. Yeah, um, I think you're right because I think that's probably the most untapped market out of all of them. I mean, we've seen all the um, we've seen all the cartridge based ones, and on top of that. Um, we've also seen the developers, like like Nintendo, saying and all that stuff, trying to combat that coming out with their minis and things like that. Um, but yeah, like uh, I really do think now handheld is uh, yeah the handheld market is wide open for it, and I'm curious to see what um, you know Nintendo, Sega, um, Sony, what they do to combat uh, again what they come out with to try and combat it. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. You know, we, we started to see last year a lot of these collections, like the Castlevania collection, the Contra collection, uh, even the, uh, the collection of Mana series, uh, be oh, released yeah. with Game Boy versions of those respective games on across all platforms. Um, I, you know, untapped is one way to say it to me. I feel like it's just next. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, all these Nintendo clones, the Super Nintendo clones, Genesis, Atari, I just feel, hand, or Game Boy at least for now, uh, being the top handheld system of all of them, and I don't think I'm being biased on that. I think the proof is in the pudding with the Game Boy. Um, I think it's just next. And we saw last year, uh, near the end of last year, Analog re- um, talk about their Analog Pocket, which is their handheld. So with the Pocket, you can actually play on the go and then there'll be an adapter where you can play the games on your television, uh, and also adapters where you can play other handheld systems. The Hyperkin, the Retron Junior, as of right now, and not a lot of details are out. There was no gameplay um, available at CES. It was just more, here it is. Um, it literally looks like a little cube. It kind of looks like almost like a little tiny Borg cube from the size of it. Um and it just like a toaster. You put the games on top of it. 720p HDMI out. Um, it looks like, if I read it correctly, composite as well. Uh, out oh. for for the, some of the older televisions. And the controller appears to be a wireless uh, Hyperkin. I think Hyperkin calls it the Scout controller. Basically, a Super NES controller. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. Be honest with you, I'm not, not seeing any ports to to hardwire a controller into it, but I'm, I'm sure that might be available down the road. Uh, and your first thoughts on this Retron Junior when you saw it, you know, like the look of it and everything. Yeah. When I saw it, I thought the design was really cool. It looked like, you know, it looked like a mini GameCube to me. It's a, um, yeah. <laughs> mostly, mostly because it's a cube. So anything in, in a cube form will look like a GameCube. Um, <laughs> but I thought that was, uh, I thought that was a really cool, uh, I thought that was a really cool thing. And, um, again, um, the design is nice. Um, it looks like something that'll, you know, that'll look great on my shelf. Again, however, I already have a system that does what it does. So there's no need for me personally to get it. I know you tried out the retro freak. It didn't work out for you. So you returned it. So, and, and on top of that, um, I didn't, you've been, I didn't well, return it. I threw it out in a fit of rage. Oh, you didn't even return it? I bought it from England. How was I going to return it? I was going to have to pay more money in shipping, probably. You what? You should have at least kept it. I chucked it. <laughs> and here I am. I have a nice one that sits on my shelf that was really <laughs> cheaper than the one you bought. Uh, it was. <laughs> I, I, I told you I would have picked one up for you in Japan. I am aware of this. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um... Because handheld games aren't weren't really my bag. Also, uh, me going, yeah, me going back 
and trying to really dive into. And I'm sure there are a lot of great hand no games. Don't get me wrong. It's like there's so many console games I haven't played that I have a hard time even starting to look at handheld. So th- this particular item, not necessarily for me, um, but at the same time, I definitely can see the appeal for Game Boy, you know, Game Boy enthusiasts, basically. Well, let me ask you this, Ann, and if I may. So, all right, I get, I totally get it, and I, yes, I know you you weren't into the handheld scene, but you know, with something like this, something like. Um, uh, the system that would plug directly into the into your television, or even the retro freak. Now that you have it, you know, could you now consider these to be console games, kind of sort of? Because now you are able to play them, and I know you're out. I'm not trust me. I'm not judging you. I mean, secretly deep down inside, I do. But on the outside, right now on this you know, topic, that's okay, I come up with that. <laughs> on this topic, I just feel like this is. A market where, like, if you're out buying retro games for the, you know, f- what we'll call the home consoles and games you've never played, I think this is a perfect opportunity for you because there are, and you know this, I know you do, there are yeah. gems on the Game yeah. Boy that will rival those NES and SNES and Genesis games. Oh, yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, you know, um, I picked up um, Zelda, Oracle of Ages, and Oracle of Seasons for that reason, you know? Mm-hmm. Um my, my thing is, I haven't. It's it's really kind of funny because you know all these years later, when it comes to the Game Boy market, um, I don't have a tremendous amount of knowledge. I would actually have to do research aside from the usual Mario Zelda games, which everybody knows about. Outside of that, um, I don't have a lot of knowledge in regards to the Game Boy market. I would have to go look up stuff and figure out. Oh yeah, this is a game I would play. Um, you know, now on my TV um, or on the Switch. Um, um, get, um, you can download Game Boy games on the Switch now too, right? No, not individually. Again, they're uh, part okay. of the packages. Yeah, yeah, part of the pack. But you know, so um, so yeah, it's a, it. I would treat it as almost like me again, just doing this for the first time and really yeah, diving no, no, into absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, but I, again, you know, like I said, my 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 whole argument at the moment, and I just had this conversation with a friend of mine last night. I have so many games that I've purchased just within the last like two months that I'll probably never play. And they're all console based and they're sitting here. Hell, I've got stuff from Black Friday four years ago that is still they're all still shrink wrapped. I swear I'm going to play Evil Within. I've been I've wanted to play it since I bought the damn game. Um, But, you know, they just sit there. So it's like to open up. This is my personal thing to open up a whole other world. Um would be a daunting task right now. Uh, and that's the only thing that's really keeping me away from it. However, if there are some hidden gems between you and anybody who's watching or listening that everybody thinks I should jump on for the Game Boy, I'm all ears because I have a system that I can play it on. I will happily do it. And you know what? This is 2020. It's time we start streaming our gaming, Larry. Um, yes, yeah. Because uh, we had talked about, we had talked about on uh, the, for our plans for 2020, one of the things we wanted to do is start beating games we haven't beaten before. Larry finally did one this oh, year. Yeah. We I, yep. Yeah. He, cl- he closed out 2019 in style with Kung I did. Fu. I did, but, then, yeah. but then he opened up 2020 with Kung Fu, you know, by defeating it, which was great. Now we just need to really like focus on that. And to be honest, like if there are any handhelds out there that, you think would be perfect for me? I'm, you know, let me know. Cool. I, w- I will go to my game store and buy it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So the Retron Junior. I-, I love the fact though that Hyperkin could have afforded a better copy of Pokemon Yellow that they used for the display. Because if you zoom in on it, it is like ratty. It's old looking. All right, fine. Maybe that makes it look nostalgic. But, <laughs> but I was like, come on. There's better copies of Pokemon Yellow you can get out there. Um, oh, well. <laughs> I'm not choosing you. <laughs> now, there is um, the uh, – supposedly, there is a connector where you can hook two either, I'm assuming, two of these Retron Juniors together for two-player action on Game Boys cool. for two games, uh, two televisions. Or I would imagine you can then – you could hook it up like one television, one Game Boy and play two-player like that or maybe even data transfer. More information for that to come out. And I just want to say this because I've I've read some stuff online and I've talked to some of my friends. Yes, Hyperkin has already said it's going to run off of emulation. 
And I know there's there's some listeners out there, some YouTube watchers who watch us, who are very particular. Like they need that pixel perfect. If it's not running off the hardware, I don't want to play it. Mm-hmm. To me, Hyperkin, and, and this is not a knock on Hyperkin. Actually, I like this comparison, and I'm taking it straight from Clerks too. Hyperkin is like the Kmart of the of these clone systems. Ouch. No, no, it's like, you know, they're for a budget price compared, like, this is going to be so much, so much cheaper than the analog pocket. And I'm not even considering, like, the add-ons on the pocket to play Game Gear and stuff like that. Just alone. That's why, you know, I ordered the analog Super Nintendo way back when. It was, like, almost, maybe over $200 or just about $200. And I was all set for it. And then Hyperkin put out their version for, like... I don't know, 80 bucks. It was pure, you know, just funds availability. So I switched out and I got the hyper conversion and it's awesome. And I'm not one. Everyone knows like to me, I'm not concerned about the pixel. Perfect. It doesn't, I, it doesn't bother me. I put the card in and it's running off of emulation. As long as I can get that nostalgic feel, that's what I'm looking for. And Hyperkin with the retron junior, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, so we'll see what comes out. No release date yet, sometime this year, but this is another step in, I think, 2020 being the year of the handhelds, and I really hope to see a Retron VR. Or Ooh, VB. No, that, no, that won't happen. I have five games I have to use on it. No, nope. you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it's safe to say that nobody in their right mind would ever decide, hey, you know what's a good idea? Let's go get the 17 games on a extremely terrible system 26. and and whatever it is and let's re-release them for the five people who want them. Works for me. That is a budget and counter. I haven't done this in a while but hashtag BB sucks. Hi Charlie. <laughs> Miss ya. That's why he hasn't been on the episode in 2020. So moving along with CES 2020, I'm assuming we're just going to virtually move down to the next booth. And yes. Arcade 1-Up was at oh, CES 2020, and by golly, and, yeah, they got some good stuff coming out. Oh, yeah, they do. They've got a ton of stuff coming out. Right, Link? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if you want to see the definition of pure evil, and maybe move them over just a little bit, just as you know, sometimes it gets cut off. There we go. There, folks. That's going to be, you know, the the last image before the world explodes will be that cat hitting a button. (laughs) Yeah, he is evil. Taking us all out. Uh, But Arcade 1-Up, absolutely. Arcade 1-Up, like, they they came in hardcore this year. I was like, you know, you would think think maybe they would kind of just go in the same route where it's like, hey, we licensed more games, here are some more cabinets. But no, no, they, they went all out. Did you see... First off, I have to I have to just bring this up right away. Did you see the monstrous NBA Jam arcade that they made? Absolutely. <laughs> I did. Um, very akin, of course, to the uh, giant uh, Thanos size Marvel uh, arcade that they had at. Um, did you see that one at San Diego? The yeah, giant one? Okay, I yeah. I saw it at New York Comic Con, and this thing was huge, huge, and um, ginormous. And what happens is um, they did it now for NBA Jam, and I heard people like like what they, they were talking about because the joystick and the buttons yeah. are proportionate size to the cabinet. Like you had to like put your elbow on the turbo button and like like Hulk smash <laughs> the jump button or something to shoot the, to shoot it. Oh my god! It was, it, it was basically a machine built for Shaq. It was. It was. It really was. Um, Yeah, so that was very cool. See, now that's going to be their gimmick. And now I can't wait to see, like, their next giant size machine as time goes on and they put out these systems. Um, Oh, I think I I have a feeling they may surprise us and go really, really tiny on one. Oh, (laughs) imagine. Oh, that'd be hysterical. Like, do, 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 do. Exactly. And you made a point. You made a point where now they're really starting, like, they're coming out of the blocks. And yeah, they. Arcade One Up did start as just. Hey, look, you can have arcade cabinets in your home for a budget price. Uh, very yep. simple games, you know, like Asteroids and, and Space Invaders and Pac-Man and stuff like that. 
But yeah, and to to your point, they are now breaking out the big guns because you know they they got the market. They're there, and now they're going all out. And this year, we saw some very interesting uh, items. The first one, let's talk about since we already mentioned it: NBA Jam Arcade yep. Cabinet will feature three uh, versions of the game: NBA Jam, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. And NBA hang time. Now, what's really cool about this one is this is their first, as far as I'm aware of, their first cabinet that will connect to the internet. Yes, that and that was the that was the most exciting thing I think news wise that I heard from them. Granted, there were other things they're coming out with, but the fact that you can now connect to other people who have NBA Jam and play against them that is phenomenal. Yes. I mean, because it it opens the door to some of their other games having that online functionality because um, NBA Jam is one of them. But just imagine like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade um, <laughs> being available online to play with everybody. You know, it's just it, there's a whole there's so much you can do with that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it appears the online functionality is North America only right now. But, you know, time will tell if that will change uh, for our friends overseas. But you um, mean I can't bring my camera. I can't bring my cabinet to China with me. You will. You can try, but uh, well, you can still play it locally. <laughs> oh, well, imagine you have to connect to the internet to play. That'd be terrible. Yeah, but, uh, excuse me. Can I? Can I? I'll just show up at the airport. <laughs> excuse me. How can I do online? Is this check in or can I put it uh in the overhead bin? I just have it on wheel, just like, dragging it behind. <laughs> <laughs> um the uh you know what i don't have a picture of the uh nba jam cabinet in front of me i, I don't remember if it's a two or four uh oh who was that link or snow no nope, snow or an actual there. earthquake or tremor okay chubby bunny chubby bunny yeah, yeah so you were saying about the um i don't <laughs> it's rude it's just rude um <laughs> I don't remember if it's if it, if the local cabinet is a two uh, joystick or a four joystick cabinet. Um, I, I, would imagine, was, I, thought, I thought it was. Four I would imagine two because then you can get two player versus two player online. Oh, yeah. So I think right. I think of. Yeah. Now I did hear and understandable. So I don't know how they're going about this. Um, they, I don't have this fact complete, but they either did not secure the licenses for all the NBA players from these respective games. Okay. So I don't know if they're just going to replace them with current players or I don't know, something weird, like, I'm just generic players. Well, I don't know. I mean, I thought if they got the license to the game and the game and the company that produced the game had the license to the, the, the players, that that would just be it. I think for sports games, it's not a license with the players. It's a license with the players association. Okay. Which may be a little right, different. So then, yeah, I don't know how that works completely. Yeah, so I guess they would have to get the rights from the, the NHLPA. Or, well, NBA. Not a, NBA. <laughs> no, whatever, like, now I want to see I Wayne know, Gretzky and NBA Jam. No, I don't want to. No, I want to see like NHL Blitz or something like that. You know, give me an NHL game. <laughs> Didn't they have NHL Hits or something it was called, right? And it, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was NFL. Wait, it was NFL. Blitz, well, they had right? NFL Blitz. That was awesome. I loved that. I have it on yeah, PS3. I think. I forgot what I forgot what the NHL one was called. I want to say hits. Maybe, yeah, it might have been hits. Yeah. But uh, basically, they made one for pretty much every sport except baseball because baseball is boring. Yeah, it's a little, uh, a little tough to do a baseball one. <laughs> and I would love to see like an extreme golf one though. <laughs> Whack! Dink! Right in the back of the head and off for birdie. Um, and done. Uh, in an arcade cabinet, I know I will not be picking up, but nevertheless, a gorgeous. It was beautiful, and I'm going to get it. And in fact, your birthday's coming up. Oh, I'm not going to say no to it. <laughs> I wouldn't say no to it, because there's three other games on there I would play. Uh, Burger Time cabinet is coming out. Uh, and I, look, yes, I'm not crazy about Burger Time, the game, but this cabinet is gorgeous. Light yeah, up marquee. <laughs> Yeah, light up marquee, rounded sides. Um, the four games in it is going to be Burger Time, Karate mm -hmm. Champ, yes, <laughs> Bad Dudes, which Bad Dudes was a good game. It was a it was a good game, and Caveman Ninja. 
Caveman. I, I, now I can I can I can say with certainty that I've never played Caveman. Caveman Ninja. Ninja isn't Caveman. I'm doing this on the fly, so forgive me. Isn't Caveman Ninja just Joe and Mac? Uh, it might be. So, um, so it's, yeah, it is. Yeah, Joe and Mac. Yep. Um, which is actually a good game. So it's actually not bad. So it's uh, yeah. So we have that uh, new. Uh, Arcade cabinet coming out, so very cool. But not that's not it. Uh, a couple other ones to mention real fast. Uh, they're doing, which I don't know what this is going to look like yet, because I haven't seen a picture of it, a sit-down style Star Wars cabinet. Yes. Now, I don't know if that means it's just going to be just shorter, or if they're actually trying to build the whole, remember like you actually sat in the yeah. unit no, no, and everything? No. I think that's the plan. Oh my god, that's ooh, that's that's going to be almost bigger than the original. So, no, I mean, um, I would, I would, original Star Wars that they're putting out. I was going to say, I would assume the way that they're going to build it is not necessarily like where you're really sitting down low because you remember those cabinets you kind of sit and lean back and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I would assume kind of more in a, a a standard seated position so that it's not that big. Almost, okay. um, I would think almost like phone booth ish. Fair enough. Way. Fair enough. Uh, they're doing a new Frogger cabinet. Yeah. What happened? Mm-hmm. I said that's a guess on my part. Oh yeah, yeah. This is all uh, uh, all uh, hearsay. Uh, no, not hearsay. Um, guessing. No, it's just all conjecture. <laughs> there we go. That word. Uh, new Frogger cabinets coming out. Uh, don't know much more about that, but still Frogger, classic game, classic arcade. Uh, and here's a good one I like. Did you hear about the Sega Golden Axe cabinet that they're going to be releasing? No, I didn't. But Ooh. I heard about the Sega Golden Axe cabinet. Oh. I was like, oh, I get to break something to you. Sega. So so it's going to be five games on there. It's going to be Golden Axe, Shinobi, Altered Beast, mm-hmm. Wrestle Wars, which that's a good pick. Yes. And for the first time re-released since it came out on the arcades back in the early 90s, uh, Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder. Yes, and you know that's funny. The, um, the Revenge of Death Adder is actually the arcade at my barcade here. In oh, LA. really? Oh, that's awesome. That one, which is cool. And yeah, when I saw that one, out of all of the out of all the ones they were talking about, that was the one that had me most excited because of the list of games that were on it. No, that is a very good list. Uh, actually, yeah. with that list, I gotta say this may break my top three cabinets. I would love to get from Arcade One Up. Um, right now, it's the yeah. Turtles. The Turtles Arcade, and then the Final Fight Arcade, and then this one. Okay. Yeah, see, me, I want, um, let's see, I want the uh, Mortal Kombat one, Mm -hmm. and and I want the Turtles one, but I'm holding out, I'm holding out, because I know it's going to happen, because they've already got Marvel. I want my (laughs) X-Men cabinet. That is what I want. If they made an X-Men cabinet, would they go as far as making it a dual screen, do you think? No, I don't think so. No, I think no. I think the most you would get out of it is a four player. They won't even go the six player. I mean, but the, still, even if that, even if it was like a smaller screen, like I'm not gonna say tablet size screens, but maybe something a little bigger than tablet size screens. You know, maybe you can squeeze six players into that. Maybe, but I'm perfectly fine with just a four player X Men cabinet. That would make me very happy. Fair enough. Uh, the Burger Time Special Edition cabinet can be pre ordered as we speak from Arcade One Up. Uh, they're hoping for a ship date of March 1st on that one. And the final news out of MB, uh, NBA Jam, out of Arcade One Up, is that mm-hmm. now they're dipping into pinball. Not yes. 100%, but in their way, which I don't have a problem with. Yeah. Um, they announced their first ever, I think it's a three quarter, um, scale yep. pinball machine. And what better way to start off your pinball machines than to release a star Wars one? <laughs> yes. Um, now not only is it a pinball, here's the, here's the catch. It's digital pinball. So mm-hmm. it's not a, it's not an actual hardware pinball machine, which makes sense. Cause that would be a hump to maintain, but yep. I think they're saying those who've played some. I think I think they were uh, on demo there. Um, the digital pinball, and I I think I may have even played a digital pinball machine before. Um, it still runs pretty smooth. Even the pinball games like on the Switch and stuff, they're pretty accurate. They feel really good. So I think this is pretty cool for a home. Again, a budget home oh, yeah. pinball machine, and it's digital. Go for it. 
Yeah, and to your point, I mean, to, to release a regular pinball machine, the maintenance would be ridiculous. Yeah. So I think I think this is probably you know the, the 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 best way that you could deliver a pinball machine that's affordable to just a, you know just a schlubs. Yeah, and and they're working with Zen Studios, who normally does put out those uh, versions on the home consoles. And like I said, they're really good. They'll be working with Bally Williams. So you know, Star Wars, even though you even said on the marquee, you know, pending approval, license approval, but th- they probably will get. At some sort of Star Wars. I know they were showing like the new trilogy, but even if they had to go back to the original trilogy, um, nevertheless, pinball, very cool. So Arcade 1-Up, hitting it real good. Yeah, and then there's one other thing I wanted to bring up with Arcade 1-Up, and I know, and I think this is something that was already out before, but I was looking on their website. Okay. Have you seen tabletop ones that they've done? Oh, yeah, uh, they call, usually they're called like bar size. Um, the bar yeah. size? And they're and I think they're only like a hundred bucks. Yep, yep. There's only like maybe one or two games in them. Uh, I think they're yep. releasing new ones. Um, actually, you know to, about that. I also heard supposedly at um, at CES they were also showing like some almost like plug and plays that they're going to be doing. Supposedly, mm-hmm. someone said there was this giant like Pac Man uh, joystick. All it is is the joystick and a wire to run into your television. And you literally like okay. set it up on the floor and you play on your TV. I haven't seen any photos of it, but it's interesting if it's true. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about it, if you just have a if you just have a stand to put up in your living room and you stick a, a joystick right on top of it, I go, you might. It's just like playing at the arcade anyway. But it's just, <laughs> you just have a giant. This is very true. Uh, so again, arcade one up, hitting it, hitting the home run. I uh, can't wait to see more. Uh, of these items, especially the pinball machines, and uh, we'll wait and see what else Arcade 1-Up has to offer. Very cool. Yeah, very happy with Arcade 1-Up. So let's move on to now next-gen systems. Uh, we're going to talk about two, not not a lot more details came out, but we got a little more details. Let's start with the one that is confusing everybody as far as what's going on with it. We're talking about the PlayStation 5. Yeah, I know. Cause I think everybody is really confused with how bold they went with their new logo. <laughs> I know. Everybody just doesn't <laughs> understand. Like, like, I mean, talk about talk about taking a leap forward with your logo. I mean, that was just amazing. I, I mean, and kudos to Sony for really, you know, really stepping out of the box on that one. And, and for those of you not catching the sarcasm in Anthony's voice or face, basically, I'm, please. The PlayStation 5 logo, it's the same logo it's been since the PS2, which makes sense. You know, why Why mm-hmm. change perfection? Uh, but it is, but it's Sony stating, all right, now we're on the road to PlayStation 5, which is coming out holiday 2020. Yes, very excited about this. Yeah, no, me too. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, as far as like hardware and stats, look, you know, that we'll talk about that later on down the road. Uh, right now, and this is from Sony, so... Not from any other sources. You're going to get into that in a second. Uh, the release date, holiday 2020. So we're, we're talking probably November. That usually ends up yep. being the case. Save up your pennies. Um, so a, a price tag hasn't been uh, set yet, but they say that uh, PlayStation 5 uh, pricing will be attractive to gamers. So I'm not sure what that means. Um, a quote, to quote Mark, uh, Mark Kearney, Um, or Cerny, uh, the lead architect of the PS4, um, quote, I believe that we will be able to release it as a suggested retail price that will be appealing to gamers in light of its advanced feature set. Now, granted, when I bought the PS3, it was like 700 bucks, and that was like the first Blu-ray player built in that I bought, so I can only imagine what the PS5 is going to be. Well, and that, and that's why it was 700 bucks. I think, um, no, but when I, when I think they're talking about talking about it being in a more affordable way is because we're also talking about te- like as technology advances, it becomes increasingly less expensive to create. So I really do think that the price point is not going to be that far off from the PS4, um, including the fact that they've already announced that the, the system itself is actually more environmentally friendly on top of that. True. Um, now, to, to say that, yes, it becomes cheaper to make doesn't necessarily mean cheaper to sell because... They're there to make a profit, and you know. Let's face facts. Yep. In today's day and age, where we're now buying, we being society, maybe not me and you, well, me definitely, where we're buying thousand dollar cell phones. What makes it 
you know, out of the realm of possibility to make an eight hundred dollar PlayStation Five again if you know this thing costs me almost a thousand dollars, and my last phone well, costs more than a thousand. Yeah, and I'm not arguing that. And when you're a slave to Apple, that's what happens. No, but not just Apple, think, uh, Samsung as well. Not you with your weird plus one or whatever. Uh, oh, my 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 affordable one plus that I got for half. <laughs> Right, so you got your. Uh, iPhone. They're the Kmart I, of cell phones. Oh yeah, they're the Kmart of cell phones. Look, look, look how crappy I look in this vid in this screen. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Me. This forty-eight me- megapixel thing. Oh, it's just trash. Forty-eight megapixels. Uh, what? Yep. Yeah, so, um, but uh, uh, what I was saying is, um, I, I actually think they're going to surprise us, and it's going to be surprisingly. I think I think it's just going to be more affordable than everybody's thinking. Okay. I, that, that's just uh, I'm 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 going to say four to five hundred. That's where that's where that's where I'm guessing. All right, I'm going to say five to six. So we'll see. Okay. We will. Fair say. enough. Uh, all right. So we all know, and it is official, that it will be completely backwards compatible with the PS4 library of games yeah. right now. Uh, before we move on from that, I do want to say that supposedly, actually, PS4 games should be looking a little bit better on the PS5 because they should run faster because of the faster processor yep. on the PS5. And also, uh, also in addition to that, um, anybody out there who owns a PlayStation VR, it will also be compatible with the PS4 yep. version of the VR. Uh, here, just to give a quick demonstration about how fast PS4 games will load, and uh, you may uh, be familiar with this, uh, Spider-Man. Takes yes. 15 seconds to load on a PS4 Pro with the PS5 developmental kit. It took less than a second. Yep. So it was insane. I mean, yeah. I remember seeing that. That video came out. They showed that like uh, at some point last year, I think. Uh, I think it was even a, it may have been a Comic Con or one of the other shows. But um, just yeah, just the announcement that uh, you know again backwards compatible to the PS4 is great. But we should really address the rumor that's going around. Yeah. Um, because. There, uh, I forgot the name of the I forgot the name of the site who posted it, but they're known for breaking. They're, they're known for breaking news from mm-hmm. companies. And do you? I don't know if you remember the name of it. Um, but they, it's or they, something. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. But they basically came out and announced that the PlayStation Five will be fully backwards compatible all the way to the original PlayStation One. Which so, everyone's been saying since the PS Five was even announced. So. You know, to me, that's oh, just you know, a matter of throwing darts at the board and hoping for a bullseye. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I mean, when Sony first announced it and when they came out and they said the PlayStation 5 will be fully backwards compatible, they purposely did not say fully backwards compatible with the PS4. They just said fully backwards compatible. Mm-hmm. Now, you would, you would think that from a marketing and PR perspective, um, they don't want to be misleading to their audience or to, you know, to their consumers. So I don't think that was said in error because if it was said in error, they would have very quickly come out and said, oh no, we meant with the PS4 because it got everybody, you know, rumbling about this. So the fact that they never amended that makes me think, and again, this is, this is me on the business side of things. When I think of stuff uh, in entertainment, it's like you, you don't say things like that in error and not take it back. So that's why I really do think, it's going to be fully backwards compatible to the PS1. It might be. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not saying that it's not going to be. I have hopes, yeah. but me being me, I don't believe it till I see it. So, you know, Agreed. yeah, until I, that, 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 yeah. until Sony comes out with that press conference, you know, showing. But here's the thing that kind of confuses me. I think it was in that article that we posted, if not I may have read it in a different article, but they said and the wording specifically that the PS5 will load PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. Like they didn't specifically say you can play them. They just it was weird. They said you can load them. I don't know what the, I don't know if that's cryptic for something. Well, you know. Well, here's what I'm wondering. Well, here's ultimately what I'm wondering. Um, uh, and they they they, t- they were talking about even in that article that uh, that we posted on our Facebook page. Um, that graphics are going to get updated and everything like that. So when they say that it's able to load it, what's what's entirely possible is, and again, that article was talking about how they've been working on this technology since like 2011 or 2012. Mm-hmm. It's entirely possible what they're doing is because the graphics and everything wind up getting upgraded for the game, you're not just going to play your original 
Crash Bandicoot or Tomb Raider off of your PS1 disc. They probably had, like, this is my thought, they've had people update the graphics so that when you put the disc in, it just recognizes that you own the game and you load the remastered version of the game on your PS5. Which I think is kind of like how Xbox does it. Because when you play a backwards compatible game on the Xbox, you don't just put the game in and it runs. You have to download like an emulator almost. Or I won't won't call it a patch, but yes, something to run that game. And yes, on the Xbox One, some of the 360 games, even some of the Xbox original games, have had graphical upgrades slightly because of that. So this is probably, if they go back to the PS1, I'm assuming that's how it's going to be. You put the game in, it would ha- like in other words, you have to be connected to the internet to play it. It downloads a, a patch or a ROM, whatever you want to call it, and then you can play the game. So we'll see. Yeah. And then on top of that, I also think that this is a this is actually a really smart way for Sony um, again to get ahead of um, these third parties that are coming in and take and trying to do the whole emulation stuff, like the way that we were talking about Retron or the mm-hmm. way we've talked about Pong Mega. Like everybody's like frothing at the mouth for we want a retro system that plays our old disc games because we don't wanna we don't wanna go out and buy all these consoles again and have them sitting around. And that's why like you and I, we've gone in and purchased the Polymega, uh, pre ordered the Polymega. Um, yep. so I think this is a perfect opportunity for Sony to basically cut them off at the past before they start releasing all of these disc playing retro systems. It's like, hey, you guys don't need to go out and buy a third party system because We've just released a system that lets you play our entire library all the way back to the beginning. And I, and again, I think we're we're slowly getting there where we're going to see everyone really start doing that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Holiday twenty twenty. Holiday twenty twenty is going to be very busy and possibly pricey because the PS five. Again, we'll go into more details as the year goes on about these systems. But the PS5 isn't the only one that's coming out this holiday season. Uh, old Bill Gates is dropping the old Microsoft. Xbox, wait, what is this? Microsoft, X, no, Series, what What the hell do they call this one? Um, Xbox Series wait. X. Oh, okay. I thought, it, oh, did they leave Scarlet behind? Well, that, yeah, Project Scarlet is now officially Xbox Series X. Um, oh, God, is that the I can't keep track of this. <laughs> Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, no. no. <laughs> See, whoever is in their naming department, fired. <laughs> Please, stop it. So and <laughs> and it's very funny because actually this news of Xbox Series X like officially being announced was dropped when I was on when I was doing that episode of the Technocrat uh, a few weeks ago as we were live on Facebook it was the night of the Game Awards and that's when they officially came out and announced Xbox Series X and I remember uh, the producer over there was like oh who's a gamer he was like oh. Yep, no, they just announced a new Xbox system. Like, you see us live on the show, all of a sudden kind of get diverted and like, oh, okay, new system. Um, So, yeah, Project Scarlet, we heard about it last year at E3, Xbox Series X, which Xbox is really making their system now look like a home PC. Like, it's really weird looking. Not weird looking, just different. doesn't look like a home console, basically. No, no, no. It it looks like a PC tower. Exactly. But you can lay it on its side, you know, like you have every other system. Uh, Again, kind of the same thing with the PlayStation 5 coming out this holiday season. So we're assuming that means November. Um, No price yet on this. This bad boy may be a little pricier than the PS5. PS Um, And it is right now they're saying that it's just basically just an upgraded Xbox One X. So everything you can do on the Xbox One X now including backwards capability, you'll be able to do on this bad boy. Yep. And again, um, I I have fallen out of favor with Microsoft, so I'm curious to see when they say backwards capability, how backwards they go. Okay. Uh, Well, right now they're going back to the original. Now, remember, for Xbox, for Microsoft systems, it's not their decision for the backwards capability. It's the original publishers. So just to be fair, just to to be fair on that one. And that's understandable, but at the same time, when you've got like you know, when you've got a you know company like Sony who's like, hey, you can have our whole library, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it puts the pressure on Microsoft to try and get those publishers. Oh, of course. And not only that, but you know, how much as much actually also for the PS Five, you know, again, we're moving into the future. It's twenty twenty. I mean, uh, 
do you see the writing on the wall? And I'm not trying to get into, you know, yay or nay on the topic, but do you see any sort of writing on the wall as far as the move? Not you personally, in general, the move to digital and the move to cloud. Because I think this Xbox Series X is also going to be focusing, as much as there's a disk drive in it, it's going to be mm-hmm. focusing on like their, their Xbox Game Pass and the new Windows Cloud uh, thing that service that they're going to be coming out with. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think it's inevitable because everything, every, everything is essentially moving to a streaming service where it's like, hey, pay a monthly fee and you can watch whatever you want. Same thing with games. Pay, pay a monthly fee and you can play whatever you want. The problem that I, the problem that I have with it um, is the sense of there's no ownership involved anymore. I'm so, not, like, and, no, no, I know. Yeah, I'm, this is just what I'm saying. I do think we're moving in that direction. I don't ever think it's going to be exclusively that because, again, as consumers, I, and I don't know if it's just because it's ingrained in our heads and we, it's kind of old school for us. We want a sense of ownership to the titles we're playing or we're watching or whatever. So um, I don't know if it's ever going to go away. I think maybe we'll have a dual. It'll be dual for a long, for a while. Um, But yeah, there's no question that everything is moving in the direction of subscription service, cloud-based, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just the way that we're going. Okay. And again, this bad boy is going to be a lot faster than the Xbox one. We'll get into stats as the year uh, comes upon us. But with these new systems, let me, and I don't remember if they will be capable, what I'm about to mention, they may be upgradable later, but with the announcement of also all these 8K televisions that were being shown off at um, CES, looks like, you know, the systems, I I think, are going to start moving in that direction. We just got to 4K. It, you know, I, I... I'm trying to think what the example was and who said it. So forgive me because I'm going to grossly misquote this. But someone was talking about how we went from like the invention of the wheel to flight in like, I don't know, like a thousand. No, more than that. Like a a long time frame. Like 10,000 years. So Yeah, but then we went from like or that to the wheel in like 10,000 years, but the wheel to flight in like a hundred Again, those don't quote me on those numbers. What I'm saying is, tech, new technology. We're upgrading so fast that you know to go from black and white to color, and then how long it went took from color to, to HD, and to a little shorter time to get to 4K. And my, you know, 4K has probably been out for about three years, meaning like budget for for home yeah. view. Um, and now we're already starting to talk 8K, and right behind that, 12K is nipping on its heels. So I know I can't I can't deal with this. <laughs> Look, 4K I mean, television now too cheap. No, 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 I just bought my 4K TV in August. <laughs> no, which is a smart thing to do. Remember, yeah, you know, you don't really, you never really buy anything day one unless you're me, uh, because you can <laughs> actually look at my history. Yeah, you can see good. why. <laughs> but. I'm just saying, like, now, like, I just got this, my 4K television will be two years this February, and I can see myself getting budget price an 8K TV, like, in another, like, three years. So that's, like, five years for this TV, which I think is, like, a shorter time frame than usual. And there's nothing wrong with upgrading your television. That's just the way it is. Well, no, I mean, you remember growing up, you had your furniture television for, like, 15 years or 20 years. I was just... I was at Game On, and we were just talking about that, like the old televisions that we had. And I, the the guy who was there, great guy, one of the customers, it's like, yeah, I had to go up, I had to click through to get to the channel. I'm like, bro, oh I God. am with you. And I'm older. I'm like, trust me, I wasn't that far off from having my TV being black and white. <laughs> I know. You know, I mean, there was, there was still, there was, you know, I mean, obviously, we look back on it fondly, but there was still something cool to it because it's like you felt like you were go- you were switching to like, you know, a channel just designated for you, you know, <laughs> very true. Game, I like that. nothing else. And you, and you know, it just brought you into that world. It's like, no channel three is mine. It belongs to me. Who ever used channel four? You always had the option of channel three or channel four. Yeah. I didn't understand that either. I think there was one, like you use channel four. I think when, when TVs first started getting like digital with the remotes and stuff, I remember we had a TV where, for the life of me, I couldn't get it to um, to recognize Channel Three, so I had to use Four. Oh, oh um, yeah, okay, I know what you're talking so, about. But but um, but for the most part, yeah, there was no reason to use Four. 
I also remember at one point when Channel Two was an option. Really? I don't ever remember Channel Two. I do. I do. There was. It was a. Yeah, there was one. I, I can't remember which one it was. Where it was either two or three, and then obviously three or four. And then if you go back even further, you know the Atari, where you had the little switch on the back that you had to. Yeah, play. that's what I'm talking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Daisy chaining. The RF switches. <laughs> oh God, I had like all those RF switches. Like this. oh, okay. was, <laughs> get them. <it> <laughs> <laughs> oh, the good old days. And you know what? You know, it, it was a fire hazard in the making, and we're still here. Certainly was. Uh, so, yeah, so PS5, Xbox Series X, we are staring down the highway to those. So uh, we will be on the lookout. So much more information will be coming out as the year goes on. And, of course, we will certainly let you know. Um, and there's other couple things kind of just real quick to hit. And you mentioned something about Sony at CES. Wow. Okay. So again, not necessarily video game related, but this is just really awesome news. Sony out of nowhere um, just decided to reveal a car. <laughs> they, 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 it's a car. Um, and they just wheeled it out. You know, they wheeled it out at CES. It's called the Sony Vision S. You know, mm-hmm. kind of got a little futuristic look to it. Um, and again, they've already announced that they're not going to be, you know, this is not this is not a car they plan on mass producing. Although, let me tell you something. If people would cl- start looking at it and they're clamoring over it, they're going to make it. Or or they're just going or they're just, you know, teasing about it and they are going to make it cuz I can't imagine making a car and then not you know, th- why not produce it. I think it's more just for the sake of like look what we could do. Exactly. And look what the future I- can be. Yeah, and think about how many gamers are Sony fans, and think about how many of them would line up around the block to buy a Sony car. You know, it reminds me of episodes of Pimp My Ride, when they take, like, an old, like, you know, Datsun and redo the whole thing, but then they put, like, three Xboxes in the back of the car, you know what I mean, like these high-def televisions. We don't need people. It's bad enough people are texting and driving. We do not need a PS5 or 6 or 7 by the time this car would come out to to be available on the dashboard while someone is driving. (laughs) Hold on. Gran Turismo. Just make the car a Gran Turismo controller. Well, there you go. It's perfect. (laughs) But um, And speaking of um, dashboard. The dashboard on this was amazing because of course. it was a fully digital at like LED display dashboard all the way across from driver's side to passenger side. So basically yep. from door to door, you just had this really long um, display and it looked beautiful. Oh, it did. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it, it absolutely did. And again, you know, it's entirely possible they made this just to show what they what their tech can do, mm-hmm. and it's entirely possible that they're getting into the uh, you know the automobile industry in terms of selling their tech to other you know automobile companies. Yes, um, you'll never hear. You know, God, I, I'm so old. I'm saying automobile, um, car industry. Who was I talking um, to? So- uh, real quick, I was talking to someone, was it you? And I'm like, oh, wait, oh, someone's like, you're going to go see Rise of Skywalker? I'm like, nah, I'm going to wait for it to come out on video cassette. And they were like, on what? <laughs> I just, I just said it. Video cassette, VHS. <laughs> Which then just reminded me, I was, I was watching a, a Pluto TV the other day, and uh, I came across UHF. <laughs> oh, great movie. Oh, great movie. <laughs> Thank you. I was watching that, and then a couple days before that, Chopping Mall, which is the cheesiest horror movie ever. Uh, but <laughs> still awesome. Mall. Anyway, anyway segue. <laughs> um, so the Sony Vision S, it's a full, it's fully electric, and that's the other reason why I like it. I feel like um, I, I think that if they're diving into all of this technology, that there is a possibility they're actually going to release a car. But we'll see what happens down yeah, the road. Course. We don't know. Um, you know, it's just another way for Sony to diversify their assets. You know, here's a whole other platform we can do. Uh, and electric vehicles are going to be, they're inevitable. I think we're all heading in that direction. Mm-hmm. Um, fossil fuel is you know, going to be a thing of the past eventually. I Very yeah, they, George Jetson. Uh, well, I would love, I want the Jetsons vehicle. We're way overdue because I'm tired of sitting in traffic. Although on the Jetsons, he sat in traffic in the air too, which I thought was really weird. All the time. His wife stole his money, and but yep. he was able to turn his car into a briefcase. Yet he still parked in a parking spot, which I didn't get. 
Yeah, no, well, you know, let, 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 let's not go there. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Sony Vision asked a little, like just a weird random surprise from Sony. <clears throat> but again, something interesting has got people talking. And one final thing, uh, real quick to, not final, there's a ton of things from CES, but what we'll mention here, I just want to talk about, um, Alienware, uh, throwing their hat into the home console again, actually, where they, it's a concept, it's not final, final, uh, uh design is not, uh, official, but it's, it's called the concept UFO. It is basically a switch, um, in design, in design. Yeah. Uh, runs uh, the ideas will run on Windows 10. Uh, of course, you know the graphics are ridiculous. Yada yada yada. Uh, 1200p display, which I don't even know is available right now. Um, eight inch screen, touch screen, but it has two controllers that you can undock from the side of the consoles. <laughs> you can put those into another little docking station to use as a regular controller and hook this thing up to your TV. Great idea. Uh, basically, almost like a Steam. It could be just a glorified uh, Steam uh, box, Steam engine on the run, you know, to download PC games, uh, which I'm for. It, it, trust me, if this thing works out well, I, I don't mind playing some PC games on my TV. But nope, what I, I what I want to mention is just how, I mean, it's it's the Switch. I mean, just the, the way the docking is, the way. You know, it connects to the TV. It kind of reminds me of how uh, the iPhone is 10 years old. 12 years ago, you, every one of us, could have had a, a cell phone that looked completely different from the other. Clamshell, small, big, lights up, dances, whatever it does. Now, every cell phone is basically the same shape. Rounded, simple, this is what it is. I feel like when something hits a good design, forget the insides of it. When something hits a good design, everyone's going to try and take from it. Has Nintendo hit with the Switch and how it's docking design and the Joy-Cons work out that now it's going to have companies copying its its model? Well, I mean it's an it's inevitable. You come up, when you come out with when you come out with a concept that's proven to be a success, somebody else is going to make something similar to it. And let's face it, the Switch is successful for what it is. You know, you've got a handheld system that can plug right into your television without any issue. Um, yeah, I mean, I I'm surprised. Uh, well, you know, Sony decided to uh, get out of the handheld um, business, so they won't be doing something like that. So Alienware stepped up. I mean, it, it's not surprising at all to me. And I think um, again, for the number of PC gamers that are out there, it's a great avenue to go when you're not near your PC. You know, you're not tethered anymore. Good. I like the concept, but if you're a PC gamer, then I think you're going to be attached to the mouse and keyboard. Unless True. so, this is going to have. I mean, it looks like Joy Cons. The buttons are all the same. Again, this is a concept, yeah. so you know it may look completely yeah. different if they release this thing. But still, the idea is there. So. Yeah, yeah, like I said, it's just in the instances when you need to go mobile. That's yeah. that's the way that I see it. I don't know. I don't know how well it's going to work out for PC gamers if you're playing it on the TV. But again, it could also just be Alienware trying to get into a market that they haven't been in before. Oh, right now, they've been strictly stuck to PC gamers, here's an opportunity for them to reach out to the console and handheld games. Absolutely. And that's basically a lot from CES. Uh, again, there were tons of stuff at CES, but these are some of the key stuff that we liked, we wanted to hit on, um, and definitely we want your thoughts about it. But before we wrap this up, uh -huh. I want to mention one thing um, that we've been talking about for as long as the podcast that we've been doing this podcast lately, yeah. and it's good because for a while, very few and far between with posts from Polymega, but I would say the last, well, since the new year, so the last week or so, uh, they've been posting very, I'll call them cryptic photos of the Polymega system. Um, no details still behind it, but with the number of posts that they've put up, like close-ups of the system, close-ups of the controller, you know, all this stuff. Very, very up close and in your face, you know, like very yeah. like in your face. Um, no, don't ever do that again. Um, are we, do you think we're finally going to get a shipping date on something that, well, I ordered almost three years ago? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think we will because um, now they're starting to not only uh, post things, but... Um, 
I think uh, I had told you either uh, that sometime last month I got an email from them, you know, like basically just verifying my information for the pre-order. Mm -hmm. So to me, when I got that email, I'm like, oh, OK, they're gearing up to start shipping this thing because, you know, after I pre-ordered it back in May, um, it's been crickets, you know, been crickets since then. So the fact that this just happened. So and now that they're posting stuff on Instagram and whatnot. Um, they're definitely gearing up, I think, to release this thing finally. Oh, Lord, I hope so. Um, I mean, just to show that they're gearing up, like, they, they put up a picture, and they've been putting up videos and pictures of gameplay and stuff like that. They had one from October 14th, and then the one after that was December 8th was their next post on Instagram. But then after that was a week ago today, so today's the 9th, no, today's, what's today, the 11th, so the 2nd? Right mm -hmm. at the New Year's. And since then, they've had one, two, three, four, five posts since then. So for Polymega, that's a lot. Again, everyone, it's the same response. When is it releasing? When is it releasing? When it's releasing? Yeah. So I, I, like you said, like I agree with the Ant. I have some high hopes that we're going to get something very, very soon because I, yeah. I'm, I can't wait. I got so many games behind me to, to really want to play. Plus now... My number one game to look for is now Silphied on Sega CD. That's my new number one. You mean Slipied? No, Silphied. S I L P. Yeah, S I L P H E E D. Oh, uh, Silphied. Uh, Silphied. I, you know, I always mix it up and I say Slipied. <laughs> no, Slippy is from uh, 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 um, Star Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Fox! <laughs> so, um, so hopefully, I'll be able to pick that up. Uh, and then that's basically about it. Um, so we're going to wrap up this episode, I believe. Um, yep. And where can they find us? Um, online. Excellent. Well, you can't find us online right now. I can't Anthony find can. anybody. I can't find anything online right now. Um, so, uh, but for you guys who want to find us, you can find us on Facebook <laughs> at facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast, Instagram at retro gamers podcast. Um, you can find us on um, YouTube. Just look for the Retro Gamers Podcast. We post our episodes there. Uh, our website, theretrogamers.com. Uh, do we still have Twitter? I don't even we know. We do. Retro Gamers Pod. We We're still there. Retro Gamers Pod. We just don't tweet a lot. Um, and uh, Twitch TRG, at uh, TRG underscore podcast. And um, wherever you listen to podcasts, especially on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Google, wherever, make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Not only subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll get notified every time a new video goes up. Uh, share with your friends. Give us the thumbs up, the likes, the stars, whatever it is, so we can definitely uh, get out there. Let your friends know. Um, we got some things coming up down the road uh, that we're really looking forward to. But uh, with this special edition, we're going to bring it into port, folks. And uh, with that, Ant, have a wonderful week. Hopefully you'll be back online very soon so you can play your Dead by Daylight and your Friday the 13th. Yes, I know. Uh, you know. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to go out in the real world and recreate it. <laughs> or play some of the old school games. Now's a perfect time. Oh, yeah, true. You know, I can just, yeah, I can just not play online. What a thought. <laughs> and, folks, with that, we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.